Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Mary, and today I'm going to show you how to make this crochet turtle. It's pretty quick to make for those looking for a fast and easy project, or for beginners looking for something simple and manageable. I do try to make my videos accessible to beginners by going over all the stitches and skills, but please feel free to speed up or slow down the video to your preferences. I'll be using US terms in this video, and we'll be using a 7mm hook, a yarn needle, scissors, some stuffing, number 6 super bulky blanket yarn in green and brown, but you can replace them with whatever you want to make your turtle with, some stitch markers, and 18mm safety eyes. If you don't have this size and safety eyes, you can replace them with a similar size or even make them out of felt, buttons, or even yarn. Now that we have all the things we need, let's get started. We're going to start by making the shell of our turtle. So grab the yarn that you're using for the shell and grab your hook, and we're going to start with a magic circle. So if you don't know how to do that, start by pinching your yarn between your thumb and your pointer finger. Hold that in place, and then we're going to wrap the yarn around the pointer and the middle finger, forming an X. Hold it in place with the ring finger, and then take your hook, have it facing upwards, go underneath the X with your hook, and then turn your hook towards your middle finger until it is 180 degrees and over the lower strand of yarn over your middle finger. Grab that strand of yarn and pull it underneath the X and then turn your hook again another 180 degrees until it's facing up. And this time go over the X and you can turn your hook slightly to the side so you can go under that lower strand of yarn over the middle finger again. Grab that yarn and pull it for the loop on your hook. And that's how you make a magic circle. If you need a slower tutorial on how to do the magic circle, I have one up on my channel, so go ahead and visit that. I'll also link it in the description below. So now that we have our magic circle, we're going to start by making seven single crochets in the magic circle. So to make a single crochet in a magic circle, we're going to take the hook and insert it inside of the circle. Just like this. And then we're going to grab our working yarn and pull it through that circle. Now we have two loops on our hook, so we're going to grab the working yarn again and pull it for those two loops on the hook. That's how we make a single crochet inside of the magic circle. So we're going to do this six more times. So again, put the hook inside of the circle, grab the working yarn and pull it through the circle. And then again, grab the working yarn and pull it through those two loops on the hook. So that's two single crochets in the magic circle. We need five more. So again, let's insert our hook into the circle, grab the working yarn, pull it through the magic circle, and then again, pull the yarn for the two loops on the hook. So that's our third single crochet. So same thing for our fourth one. Same thing for our fifth one. Same thing for our sixth one. And finally, we're making our last one, our seventh single crochet. So let's make sure that we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we can close up our magic circle by tightening it by pulling on the yarn tail. And we are done with round one. So before we start our round two, let's put our stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. So a stitch kind of looks like two strands of yarn running across the top, kind of like a V shape. So we're going to put that stitch marker into that last stitch next to our hook. So for round two, we're going to be making seven increases for 14 stitches total at the end. So to make an increase, we're just making two single crochets in the same stitch. So let's start by skipping that knob in the front and going into that first stitch. So remember this stitch looks like two strands of yarn running across the top, kind of like a V shape. And to do a single crochet in a stitch, we basically just treat the stitch like the magic circle. So we're going to insert our hook into the stitch and grab the working yarn and pull it through that stitch 
And then again, we're going to pull the working yarn for the two loops on the hook. So that's how we make one single crochet in the first stitch. So we're going to make another one in the same exact stitch because we're doing an increase. So again, pull that yarn through and then through the two loops on our hook. So that's how we do an increase. Two single crochets in the same stitch. So going on to the second stitch, again, let's pull the yarn through and then again for the two loops on our hook to make a single crochet. And then since we're doing an increase, we're going to do the same thing again into the same exact second stitch for a second single crochet. In the third stitch, again, we're doing an increase. So again, two single crochets in that third stitch. So there's our first one. And again, we're going to go into the same stitch and we're going to make another single crochet. Again, in the fourth stitch, we're making an increase by making two single crochets. So there's our first single crochet, and then we're going to make a second single crochet. Once again, go into the next stitch, make your first single crochet, pull that yarn through, and then again for the two loops on the hook, and then make our second one for an increase. Again, into the next stitch, we're going to be making two single crochets for an increase. So there's our first one. And then again, insert our hook for the stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then pull it for the two loops on the hook. We're going to remove that stitch marker since that shows that this is the last stitch of the round. And again, we're going to do two single crochets within the stitch to make an increase. So there's our first one. And there is our second one. So now we should have 14 stitches total. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Perfect. So before we move on to round three, let's grab our stitch marker and put it into the last stitch that we just made. For this round, we're going to be doing one single crochet, one increase, seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So let's begin starting in that first stitch. Let's put our hook through it and make our first single crochet. Then in the second stitch, we're doing an increase, so we're making two single crochets in the second stitch. So there's our first one, and there's our second one. And then we're going to repeat this again, so in that first stitch, we're doing one single crochet. And then we're doing an increase, so we're making two single crochets in the next stitch. Again, let's make one single crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're making two single crochets to make an increase. So there's our first one, and there's our second one. In the next stitch, we're making one single crochet. And then after that, we're making two single crochets for an increase. Again, let's make one single crochet. And then we're making two single crochets for an increase. Again, one single crochet. And then we're making two single crochets in the next one for an increase. Last set, one single crochet, and then let's remove our stitch marker. And we're going to do an increase in this last stitch, so two single crochets in this stitch. And now we should have a total of 21 stitches, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Perfect. So now we're done with round three. So once again, before we start our round four, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into that last stitch that we just made. For round four, we're just going to be doing one single crochet in every single stitch for 21 single crochets total. So again, let's start in our first stitch. And let's make our first single crochet. 
So pull that yarn through the stitch and then again for the two loops on the hook. And we're just going to repeat the same thing in the second stitch. So again, one single crochet. Same thing in the third stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fourth stitch, one single crochet. Same thing in the fifth stitch, one single crochet, and so on. So there's our sixth one. Seventh. Eighth. Ninth. Tenth. Eleventh. Twelfth. Thirteenth. Fourteenth. Fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth, and let's remove that stitch marker and let's make our twenty first single crochet. And we are done with round four. Before we start our round five, let's add our stitch marker to the last stitch that we just made. For round five, we're gonna be doing two single crochets and one increase, and we're gonna do this seven times for a total of 28 stitches. So let's begin starting with making one single crochet in the first stitch. And then in the second stitch, again, we're just making one single crochet. And then in the third stitch, we're going to be making an increase by making two single crochets in that same stitch. Again, we're making one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then we're making two single crochets to make an increase in the third stitch. So we're going to repeat this again, one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, two single crochets in the third stitch to make an increase. Again, one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then we're gonna make an increase by making two single crochets in the third stitch. Once again, one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then we're gonna make an increase by making two single crochets in the third stitch. Again, we're making one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and again, we're making an increase by making two single crochets in the third stitch. Last one, one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then we're gonna remove that stitch marker so that we can make our final increase and make our two single crochets in that last stitch. So we should have 28 stitches total. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Amazing. Let's move on to the sixth round. So for the sixth round, we're just going to be doing one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 28 single crochets. So again, let's add that stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And let's begin. So starting with the first stitch, we're going to make one single crochet. In the second stitch, one single crochet. In the third stitch, one single crochet. In the fourth stitch, one single crochet. In the fifth stitch, one single crochet. And so on. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and finally, let's remove that stitch marker and do our 28th single crochet. So we're going to repeat what we did in round six three more times for round seven through nine. So for the next three rounds, make one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 28 stitches in each round. If you find it helpful to have me counting with you, go ahead and rewind to the start of round six and do this three times. Otherwise, I'll see you at the end of round nine. Welcome back. So you should have just finished your ninth round. Let's make sure that we have nine rounds by counting from the top. So there's our magic circles. That's the first round. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you also have nine rounds, that's perfect, and we can move on to the 10th round. So for the 10th round, we're gonna be working in front loop only, and what that means is that we're gonna do our single crochets in only that front loop of each stitch. So you know how each stitch has two loops, two strands of yarn running across the top? The back loop is on the inside, the front loop is on the outside. So we're only going to go for that front loop for the 10th round. So instead of going all the way through past both loops like usual, you're only going to go for that front loop, so only halfway for that stitch. Just like that. So ignore that back loop, only go for the front loop, and that's what we're doing for every single stitch in this round. So do your single crochet just like normal, grab that yarn, pull it for that front loop only, and then grab the yarn again and pull it for the two loops on the hook. And you're going to do that exact same thing all the way around. Now grab one of your stitch markers. This is going to be really helpful later. And place it into that back loop of that stitch that you just did that single crochet. So remember we did that single crochet in the front loop only. So now we're going to place the stitch marker into the back loop, the loop that we left alone of that stitch. This is going to be really helpful for us later. And I totally forgot to add a stitch marker to the last stitch of the previous round, so go ahead and do that if you haven't done it yet and if you have an extra stitch marker. For this round, we're just doing one single crochet in every stitch for 28 total, but only in front loop only. So here's our second stitch. So going for that front loop only, ignoring the back loop, make a single crochet. And then in the third stitch, again, only going for that front loop only, make a single crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're doing the same thing. So ignoring that back loop in the front loop only, make a single crochet. There's our fifth one. Sixth. Seventh. Eighth. Ninth. Tenth. 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and finally let's remove that stitch marker and do 28. So we're going to be doing a color change right after this into green or whatever color you have for the body of the turtle. So you can complete the stitch right here or not. Um, as you know when we do a color change we usually start with the stitch before so I completed a stitch just so I can show you what we're doing. 
So I can explain better for those of you who don't know how to do color changes, but if you do know you're supposed to start from the stitch beforehand and you do know how to do your color changes, go ahead and don't finish that stitch so you don't have to undo it later. So what we're doing next is we're going to work in the back loops of the ninth round. So remember the back loops that we left behind in the previous round where we did the front loops only, now we're going to work in the back loops. So as I mentioned before, we need to do a color change here. So every single time you do a color change, we start with a stitch before the stitch you want to see the color. So for here, it's the last stitch we did on that front loop only round. So pull out half of the stitch so we're on like the two loops on the hook. So remember this is before we yarn over or like um, after the first step when we pull the yarn for the loop. Instead of finishing that single crochet with the brown yarn like we did before, we're going to grab our green yarn or whatever color you're using for the body of the turtle and we are going to finish that single crochet with the green color instead. So grab that green yarn and pull it through the two loops on the hook. This should complete your single crochet. Now we're going to secure the yarn by tying that green yarn to the brown yarn, tie it a few times to knot it in place. I usually do three times just to make sure that it's extra secure. And then what we're going to do is cut off that excess brown yarn, just leaving a little bit behind that we can hide away inside of the turtle. And remember that stitch marker that we placed to mark that first back loop only? See, I told you it would be helpful. We're now going to insert our hook into that back loop only, and we can now remove that stitch marker. And we're just going to do a single crochet, just like normal, but this time with the new green color. Just like that. And now we're going to go into the next back loop only of the second stitch. And we're going to again do a single crochet. And we're going to do this all the way around, just one single crochet in every single back loop only until we have 28 total. So that was the third one. Here's the fourth one. Here's the fifth one. Here's the sixth one, seventh one, eighth one, ninth one, tenth one, eleventh one, twelfth one, thirteenth. 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, and finally our 28th. And we are now done with this round. So before we start on round 11, let's again grab our stitch marker and put it into the last stitch that we just made. For this round, we're doing two single crochets, one decrease, and we're going to do this seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So personally, I like to do the invisible decrease, so that's what you'll see me do here and what I'll teach you as well. But if you know and prefer to do the normal decrease method, go ahead and do that instead. So let's start. We're going to start with one single crochet in the first stitch. One single crochet in the second stitch and then we're going to do an invisible decrease so what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the front loop only of that third stitch just like we did with round 10 and then we're going to go into the front loop only also of the fourth stitch as well so the front loop only of two stitches then pull the yarn for those two front loops and then pull the yarn for the two loops on the hook and that's how you do an invisible decrease. Then we're doing a single crochet again, and another single crochet in the next stitch. 
And then in the third and fourth stitch, again, we're going to do an invisible decrease. So going through only the front loop of both of those stitches, we're going to pull the yarn through those two front loops. And then again for the two loops on the hook. And then again, we're doing a single crochet in the next stitch, another single crochet in the stitch after that. And then again, we're going to do our invisible decrease in the third and fourth stitch. So pull that yarn for the front loops only, and then for the two loops on the hook. Once again, another single crochet, and then another single crochet in the second stitch, and then going for the front loop only of the third and the fourth stitch, we're going to do another invisible decrease. And then a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and then going for the front loop only of the third and the fourth stitch, we're doing another invisible decrease. Again, doing a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and then another invisible decrease by going for the front loop only of the third and the fourth stitch, pulling the yarn for those two front loops and then for the two loops on the hook. Again, a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and now we have to remove our stitch marker. This is our last invisible decrease for this round. So go for the front loop only at the third and the fourth stitch. Pull the yarn for those two front loops. And then for the two loops on the hook. And we are done with round 11. So we should have 21 stitches total. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So before we start on the 12th round, let's add a stitch marker to the last stitch that we just made. For this round, we're doing one single crochet, one decrease, seven times for a total of 14 stitches. So let's begin. So starting in that first stitch, we're just doing one single crochet. And then in the second and third stitch, we're doing an invisible decrease. So going for those front loops only, pulling that yarn for the front loops, and then for the two loops on the hook. Again, one single crochet, and then again, an invisible decrease. One single crochet, and then an invisible decrease. One single crochet, and then again an invisible decrease. One single crochet, and then another invisible decrease. One single crochet, and then another invisible decrease. One single crochet. And then finally, let's remove our stitch marker. And do our final invisible decrease. We should have 14 stitches total, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So before we start on the next row, let's stuff our turtle. So grab your stuffing and begin filling up your turtle little by little. So I found it's best to stuff a little bit at a time, even though it's really tempting to grab big pieces to try to go faster, just because when I grab too large of pieces, I tend to get overstuffed or wonky shapes. With the smaller chunks, I'm able to shape out the stuffing a little bit more into the shape of the plushie. So while we do want to fill up the majority of our turtle, we don't want to stuff too much to the top just because we do have a few more rounds to work on and it would be kind of difficult to crochet if there's a lot of stuffing in the way. So this is how it should look when you're finished stuffing. After you're done with that, let's move on to round 13. So before we start on round 13, let's grab our stitch marker and put it into the last stitch that we just made from the previous round. For round 13, we're going to be doing 7 decreases, or as I like to do, invisible decreases. So if you're doing an invisible decrease like me, go into the front loop of the first and second stitch, pull the yarn for those two loops, and then again for the two loops on the hook. 
Again, let's do our second invisible decrease. Go into the front loop only of the first and second stitch. Pull the yarn through those two loops, and then again for the two loops on the hook. Again, going for the front loop only of the next two stitches. And then again, let's make another invisible decrease, going to the front loop only of the next two stitches. Once again, we're going to the front loop only of the next two stitches, making our invisible decrease. And then another one, another invisible decrease. And finally, we're on our last invisible decrease. Let's take our stitch marker off. And make our final invisible decrease. And we are finished. So this is our final round and we're going to fasten off. So grab that yarn and pull it through the loop on your hook. Pull out maybe around a foot of yarn and cut it off. So pull that yarn you cut off all the way through the loop and that's how you fasten off. Now finish filling up any extra space you have left in the belly of your turtle with any extra stuffing. Once you're done stuffing, grab your yarn needle and we are going to sew up that opening that's left over in the belly of our turtle. So we're going to go through each of those stitches starting by pushing inward for that first stitch. Then we're going to go outward in the second stitch inward in the third stitch, outward on the fourth stitch, inward on the fifth stitch, outward on the sixth stitch, and inward on the seventh stitch. And then just pull tight and that should close up your circle. And then I like to do a few extra stitches in any place I feel like could use an extra stitch or more. And then when you're ready to secure it, push the needle through a nearby spot and leave a little bit of slack left so you can put the needle through that slack and then pull tight. That's how you secure the yarn, but for some extra security, I like to knot it a few times. So if I'm using like a thinner yarn, like number four worst of weight yarn, I usually will only do like three to five knots. But if I'm using a thicker yarn with a larger hook like I am here, where the stitches are a lot larger with a lot larger holes, I usually will do a lot more knots because I want to make sure that the knot won't get pulled through the stitches. But also we want to make sure that the knot isn't too big where it can't go for the stitches at all because we do need to push it through at least once like I'm doing here. So once your knot is ready, push the needle through the body of the turtle, pull the knot through. And once it is inside of the turtle and disappeared, we can push down, squeeze down on the turtle shell and cut off that excess yarn. And then you just have to puff up the turtle shell and it'll hide the yarn. And we are done with the shell and belly of our turtle. To make our head, again, we're using the green yarn and we're gonna start with a magic circle. So again, pinch that yarn between the thumb and the pointer finger, wrap the yarn around the fingers, making an X, hold that X in place. Take your hook, go underneath that X, and then turn your hook to grab that lower strand of yarn on the middle finger and pull it underneath the X. Then turn your hook around again, go over the X, grab that lower strand of yarn again, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Again, we're going to be making seven single crochets inside of the magic circle. So just like we did with the shell of our turtle, let's put our hook for that magic circle and make our first single crochet. So there's our first one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six and seven. Now we can pull our magic circle tight and we can move on to round two. So let's add our stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And for round two, we're just doing an increase in every single stitch for a total of 14 stitches. So just like we did with the shell. So let's begin going into that first stitch. So again, we're skipping that knob in the front, going to the first stitch. We're making our first increase and making two single crochets inside of the stitch. So there's our first one, and there's our second one. And then again, in the second stitch, let's make an increase and making two single crochets. There's our first one, there's our second one, 
Again in the third set, just make an increase in making two single crochets. One, two. Same thing in the next one. One, two. Same thing in the next one. An increase in making two single crochets. Same thing in the next one. Our first single crochet and our second single crochet. And then let's remove our stitch marker and we can make our final increase. Our first single crochet and our second single crochet for 14 stitches total. So we can count them just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Perfect. So again, before we start on round three, let's grab our stitch marker and place it into the last stitch that we just made. And for round three, we're just doing one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for another 14 single crochets total. So let's make our first single crochet in the first stitch, our second single crochet in the second stitch, our third single crochet in the third stitch, our fourth single crochet in the fourth stitch, and so on. Just one single crochet in each stitch. There's our fifth one. Six, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, and let's remove that stitch marker and make our fourteenth single crochet. So we're going to repeat the exact same thing we just did for round three for the next two rounds. So basically for rounds four and five, again, we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch for each round for a total of 14 single crochets in each round. So repeat this again for the next two rounds and I'll see you when we get back. Welcome back. So we should have five rounds total now. So let's make sure that we have them by counting from the top. There's our magic circles. There's our first round. So let's count one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. If you also have five rounds, then we can continue on to round six. So again, let's add our stitch marker into the last stitch that we just made. And for round six, we're going to be making seven decreases or invisible decreases. If you like to make invisible decreases like me, we should be left with seven stitches total at the end. So let's begin going to the front loops only of the first two stitches. Let's make our first invisible decrease or decrease if you prefer doing that. And then let's go into the next two stitches and make another decrease. And then there is our third one. Our fourth one. Our fifth one. Our sixth one, and finally let's remove that stitch marker and make our seventh and final invisible decrease. So now it's time to fasten off, so grab that yarn and pull it for the loop on the hook. And we want to leave a good amount of yarn left over to sew the head onto the turtle. I would say more than two feet. Honestly, the more you have, it, the better, just to be safe. And lastly, grab your safety eyes or whatever you're using to make your turtle. And we're going to add our eyes to our turtle. So the eyes should go between rounds three and four, so count from the top. One, two, three, so the eyes should go in between this row and the other row, so three and four. So I like to start off just putting one eye and um, making sure that it's in the right place. And then um, I like to have the yarn that's left over on the top of our turtle. And I like to have the eyes a little bit lower than halfway down from the top of the turtle's head. So grab your other safety eye and trace your way all the way around to the other side of the turtle and place your safety eye again between rows three and four. So unlike my other plushies where I have a certain number of stitches in between where I place the eyes, I don't really have that for the turtle. I just kind of eyeball it and just try to move the eyes around and make sure that they're straight. Once you're ready to secure the eyes, grab your backings and secure your eyes in place.
and we are done with the headpiece for our turtle. To make the tail of our turtle, again use the same yarn that we were using for the head and we're going to start with a magic circle. So again, make that X around those two fingers, use your hook, go underneath that X, and then use that hook to grab that lower strand of yarn and pull it underneath the X and then go over the X, grab that lower strand of yarn again and pull it for the loop on the hook. This time, however, we're only going to make four single crochets inside of the magic circle. So let's begin. So go into the magic circle, make your first single crochet, your second single crochet, third, and finally the fourth. And let's tighten up that magic circle. So for round two, again, we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch for four single crochets total. So let's begin starting with our first single crochet. Another single crochet in the second stitch. Another single crochet in the third stitch. And don't forget to flip your work if it's inside out like mine is. Remember that yarn tail that we have left over should be coming out of the inside of the piece. And now we can make our fourth and final single crochet. And then for round three, again, we're just repeating the exact same thing, just one single crochet in each stitch. So there's our first single crochet. Our second one in the second stitch. Another single crochet in the third stitch. And finally, our fourth one in the fourth stitch. And that's it for the tail. So now we can fasten off. So pull the yarn for the loop on the hook. And you don't need too much yarn here, maybe around a foot. Cut your yarn and pull it all the way through. And go ahead and tuck the extra tail end if you have any inside of the tail. And we are done with the tail. So the last thing we need to make is we need to make our legs. So using the same color, let's make a magic circle. So remember, wrap that yarn around your fingers, forming an X. Go underneath the X. Grab that lower strand of yarn and pull it underneath the X. Go over the X. Grab that lower strand of yarn again and pull it through the loop on the hook. For each of the legs, we're going to make six single crochets inside of the magic circle. So let's begin going into the circle. Let's make our first single crochet. And then let's make our second single crochet. Our third single crochet. Our fourth single crochet. Our fifth single crochet. And finally, our sixth single crochet. And let's tighten up our magic circle. So for round two, again, we're just making one single crochet in every single stitch for six single crochets total. So let's begin. There's our first single crochet, second single crochet, third one in the third stitch, fourth single crochet in the fourth stitch, fifth single crochet in the fifth stitch, and finally our last single crochet in the sixth stitch. So if your piece is inside out like mine is, don't forget to turn it the right way around. Remember the strand of yarn left over from the magic circle should be coming out of the inside of the piece. So now for the next two rounds, rounds three and four, you're just doing the exact same thing that we just did in round two. So again, one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for a total of six single crochets total. So make two sets of six single crochets all the way around and I'll see you when we get back. Welcome back. So you should now have four rounds total. So let's count them starting from the top. There's our magic circle. That's our first round. So let's count them. One, two, three, four. If you also have four like me, that's perfect. And all we have to do now is fasten off. So pull that yarn for the loop on the hook and leave yourself maybe around a foot again for sewing. You don't need too much, but it's always better to have more than less. And pull that yarn all the way through and we are finished. So we do need to make three more of these for a total of four legs. So go ahead and pause and make three more of these. And when you are finished, I will meet you at the next part for assembly and we'll put everything together. So the first thing we're going to do for assembly is we're going to attach our head to our turtle's shell. So grab your head and also grab some stuffing because we're going to stuff our head. 
So after you're done, grab your shell, and you know how the very edge of our shell we have this one part where it's not really connected? That's where we're going to put our head of the turtle. That way we can use our turtle's head to cover up that not connected part of the shell. So grab your sewing needle and thread the yarn through it. I usually like to start sewing on the turtle's head onto the shell part of the turtle, so the brown part of the turtle. And I like to start around two to three rows up from where the brown shell meets the green belly of the turtle. So it really depends on what angle you look at it, whether it's the second row or third row up, but not fully up the row. So unlike usual where we usually go in between where like the rows meet each other, this time I'm actually going for right in the middle of a stitch. So as you can see from this perspective is the second row, but right in the middle of the stitch. But honestly, just double check that the head of your turtle's high placement is in a good spot because you do want to make sure that the bottom of your turtle's head is able to touch the belly of the turtle because if it's not touching the belly of the turtle it will look very strange so i'm just working in a circle going down the shell of the turtle and going through each of the stitches around the i guess the neck of the turtle from the headpiece and moving my way down and as you can see around halfway maybe a little bit more than halfway down, we are going to reach the green belly and we're going to continue sewing onto the green belly. This is really important because the turtle's head has to meet the green belly, otherwise it will look quite funky. So keep sewing the turtle's head onto the belly and we're going to continue working in that circle. And once in a while, do double check to make sure that your turtle's head is being sewn on straight and that the eyes are in line with where you want them to be because there has been a few times where I have sewn on the entire turtle's head only to find out the eyes were completely crooked and then I had to redo everything. So to save you that time and that heartache, do make sure to double check on your turtle's eyes and make sure that your head is on in the right way. So once you're around 75% through of sewing on your turtle's head, you might find that there's a little bit of extra space in between where the turtle's head connects to the turtle's shell. So go ahead and add any more extra stuffing that you might need and then continue sewing up your turtle's head. And once you get all the way to the top where we started again, you can either stop here or you can go all the way around again a second or third time like I tend to do just to make sure that everything is super secure. But it really depends on how secure you feel like your turtle's head is already to the body of your turtle. Once you're ready to secure your yarn, push your needle through a nearby spot on your turtle's body and leave a little bit of slack so you can put your needle through that slack and pull tight and then knot your yarn several times. We're basically doing the same exact thing that we did to close up the body of our turtle, if you remember from earlier. So make several knots, and then when you're finished doing that, we're going to push the needle through the body of the turtle again and pull that knot through. And then we're gonna push down on the turtle's belly and cut off that excess yarn and puff it up a little bit, and it should be hidden inside of the belly. So the next thing we're going to attach is the turtle's tail and we're going to attach it directly across from where the head is. So the head is on the other side of the belly, the tail is going to be on the opposite side. So we're not going to stuff the tail, instead we're just going to sew the needle through both sides of the tail to close up the opening. So we're going to start attaching the tail to the belly of the turtle. It should be connected to that part where the green meets the brown of the shell, but it should be mostly attached to the green part of the belly. So again, as I mentioned, we're sewing across both sides of the tail's opening to close it together. So unlike the turtle's head, we'll be sewed in a circle around the opening of the turtle's headpiece. For the tail, we're sewing that circle closed by just sewing straight across and closing up that tailpiece. And as always, I usually like to go over everything two or three times just to make sure that everything is super secure. And when you're ready to secure the yarn, push the needle through a nearby spot on the belly, leave a little bit of slack, push that needle through that slack, pull it tight, and then again, just like always, not at a few times, just like we did before with the headpiece and when we closed off the body of our turtle. And then we're gonna push that needle for the turtle's body to pull the knot through. And then cut off the extra yarn and puff up the turtle's shell to hide the rest of it. Finally, we just need to sew on the legs, so we're going to add one leg onto each side of the turtle. 
So basically there's one leg on each side of the head and one leg on each side of the tail. I'm going to sew one of the legs onto one side of the head just to show you an example. So we're going to start attaching it right next to the neck of our turtle and again we're sewing onto the green or the belly part of our turtle, not the brown or the shell part. And again we're not going to be working in a circular fashion around the opening of the leg like we did with the head. Instead this is going to be just like the tail so we're going to pinch our leg together and then sew right through and close up the opening. So just like the tail, we are not stuffing the legs of our turtle either, they should be flat. So we're going to be working along the border of where the belly meets the shell and again our legs should be flat and we're going to attach the leg straight across like that. So once you reach the end, you can either stop here, or if you're like me and want to make sure it's extra secure, I would basically work my way backwards in the other direction and basically go back and forth one or two more times just to make sure that everything is super secure. Once you're ready to secure the yarn, again, we're just doing the exact same thing that we've been doing with the tail and the head and we closed off the body of our turtle. So again, pull that needle through a nearby spot on the body of the turtle, leave some slack to pull the yarn through and pull tight and again, knot it a few more times. And when you're done, use the needle to pull the knot for the body of the turtle and cut off the excess yarn. So with your second leg, you're basically doing the same thing, just attaching it to the other side of the head. Because it's the same thing, I'm going to do this off camera, so go ahead and pause and sew on that leg. For the last two legs, it's pretty much almost the same thing as well, but instead of starting from where the head is, we're going to start right next to where the tail is. So I'll show you me sewing it on at three times speed, but it's basically the same thing as we did earlier with the other legs at the top. And then when you're done sewing on this leg, you just need to sew on your last leg onto the other side of the tail, and then you'll be done with your turtle. If you like this turtle tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out so much. And also let me know in the comments what you named your little turtle. And if you do post it onto social media, don't forget to tag my socials. I love seeing and sharing them. Until next time.